you go to a open mic, an open mic comedy night, right? Yep. Yep. Like a lot of them are going to be pretty terrible, Awful. but they're going to be their own style of terrible, their own flavor, their own dish of terrible. <laughs> Jamie DeWolf, who is a super interesting guy in his own right. The son forced to live like his dad, permanently on the run until he changed his last name from Hubbard to DeWolf. Of like alternative poetry that was what they were, like, were just lazily being called spoken word because they didn't really have a better phrase for it. Um, and that was areas of like 120 minutes on MTV and Henry Rollins and Lydia Lunch and like all these different kinds of like punk icons were also doing spoken word and doing different types of performance. Um, and then, so I was looking to find something different than also that also just being different than just rap, right? Like I loved rap, but at that time when I was growing up, all the rap that I was exposed to, and I certainly wasn't looking hard enough or knew where to look, but all the rap I was exposed to was basically all the, all the boast, every, everything was like egotistical. Right. And like, that was like fun to write, but it just felt so ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like I would grow up like listening to uh, Beastie Boys and, um, you know, hieroglyphics, things like that. My brother was like a hip hop maniac. So he would always be playing, playing shit for me. And um, I just, I just felt like a lot of it was like fake. I was just yeah. like, I can't why, fuck all why these am I going to contribute? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, I just don't want to write like endless metaphors that are just totally fake bullshit. Like you're not a god. You don't hit that hard. You're not going to kill me unless you're that stupid. You don't, you know what I mean? Like just, it's just a whole, a whole lot of bluster. Right. Mm -hmm. And me aesthetically, I was really trying to go for the grittiest, realest shit that I could possibly find. And especially growing up in the shadow of L. Ron Hubbard and all that, which we can talk about later, but, um, mm -hmm. is that it was really important to me to not be a, a fucking boastful, egotistical, lying sack of shit. That it's just like a constant camouflage barrage of of a whole bunch of 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 like peacocking. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. throwing yeah, out a million yeah. metaphor, a million metaphors. Why you're the baddest motherfucker on the planet? And it's just some of it's so ridiculous. So at that time, in particular, I was like looking for something that was like way more hard hitting and kind of just that still used lyricism but was real and was like like uncomfortably real like really getting into to the grit of it and the writers that i was exposing myself were really trying to do that you know what i mean we're like really pushing the envelope in that way um bukowski being a good example of you know i mean he's just like i'm a degenerate alcoholic who lives on skid row and i gamble and i'm a i'm a pretty like hideous troll of a man who still has <laughs> arrogance and an ego but he's by no means building himself up to be a hero or you know anything like that wow. um to, to a degree i mean he's more of an anti-hero than anything um and and so when i got into slams they were also the only open mic that wouldn't kick me out they would just give you low scores and hope you didn't come back uh, <laughs> and so so i got dead last place the first two slams that i went to like dead last um, overtime and the lowest scores, the absolute lowest you could possibly get, like disqualified because I went way over time and the lowest scores of the night. Like you could not get a lower score than what I got on <laughs> both nights. And, um, but I love the different types of performance that I was seeing though, because these performers were, were in, you had zero to three minutes to wreck a room. Um, and whatever it is that you're trying to do to have them completely like jumping out of their chairs, like ready to follow you into the sea type, like rousing crowd shit, hilarious, funny shit. Everything had this crazy pace to it and was accelerated or it could be super hard hitting and brutal and vulnerable at the same time. And the same performer could do three different types of performances in one night. Um, and I was just blown away immediately. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that's, that's the stage that I want to be on because all these people were talking about real shit and, and the diversity was huge, right? It was yeah. all over the place. You have people who are like ex gang bangers, uh, comedians, people who are talking about super kink freaky shit. 
Um, people are talking about revolutionary shit, shit that just wasn't wasn't happening at any of the shows that I had seen or come from right. um, in a small town. Like the small town I came from, it was like the only lyricists that I knew were rappers who smoked a lot of weed, rapped about all the bitches they fucked and how they liked the skateboard. <laughs> like that was it. They were never trying to hit any deeper meaning than that. You know what yeah. I mean? Other than like, we're the dopest, we're gonna fuck your bitch. And, you know, et cetera. Like, that was, like, the only thing it was. And then this shit is, like, these people were swinging, like, hitting hard. And so then then I got into that very quickly and met um, a couple other folks who were also really after the same sort of thing I was, was to just really write something that was as, like, viciously honest as possible. And um, two of those guys... Um, were both had incredibly violent backgrounds like myself and we ended up becoming a troupe called the suicide kings and we ended up touring for years and years and ended up writing plays together and did movies together and shit like that and so one of them rupert um i met when he had basically moved here from the philippines and was like still banging and like had just robbed like a gang of houses <laughs> he robbed yeah. like i don't remember how many houses and like the week before I met him and was like still spun out from all kinds of shit and was like pulled a gun out on stage and was reading pieces about all his friends that had been murdered. And that was how I met him. And he was something similar to me that he was, it's like he, he loved music and, and, and poetry was too safe, but it's like he wanted to do something with his lyrics that was something like way more hard hitting. And so we immediately kind of saw our kinship and then um, bonded over that. Um, a lot of people, when they say slam poetry, is that a lot of it is shit. I mean, I know that. And it's yeah. unfortunate because there are so many slam poet p performers and, and, and some of them that I've seen that are like some of the most incredible, talented performers, lyricists I'd ever, I'd ever seen. I still have ever seen. Just a lot of the world doesn't know them. They go to a regular slam and they're going to see the same 90% of bad writing, bad performance that you're going to see at most places. Mm -hmm. um, I just find that, that it's a bit more self-indulgent. Like every art genre has its own 75% shit, right? But it's its own flavor of shit, right? <laughs> like, like bad, if you go to an open mic, an open mic comedy night, right? Yep. Like a lot of them are going to be pretty terrible, Awful. but they're going to be their own style of terrible, their own flavor, their own dish of terrible versus like a bad open mic poetry night versus a bad open mic hip hop night. Like they're all different flavors of terrible. You all look at some of them and you're like, what is it that you're trying to do? Like, what is <laughs> it? What, what happened here to get you to this point? Um, and so I think that, that slam performance poetry and where it's gone now, um, from what I have seen, is that it just feels like a lot, feels a lot more kind of sincere and heartfelt and is very, very um, safe. Thanks for watching. Since you're here, why not take the time to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Also, check out Brush Crew on Spotify, Spreaker, TikTok, and Instagram. And uh, that's, that's all I got.